It's all very well looking at a chart, but unless you can pinpoint your exact location on that chart, it really isn't doing you much good. How then can you transfer your actual position onto a chart? In this video, I will show you five different techniques for fixing your position. We're going to be using NOAA chart 13312 for this demonstration, which covers Frenchman and Blue Hay Basin approaches in Maine on the east coast of the US. I love these NOAA charts because they're in the public domain, so I can actually give you all the link to download the same chart that I'm using. Of course, the link is going to be in the description below. Before we even consider fixing position, let's check out the key details of this chart. You should read every piece of text on a chart before using it, and you can pause the video now if you want to do that on your own version. The bits that I just want to highlight are here in the title area. The datum of the chart is the North American datum of 1983. It does state that this is considered equivalent to WGS84, which means that we can plot GPS positions directly onto the chart. Next, depths are all in feet. This is especially important for me as I'm from Europe and I'm used to all my local charts giving depths in metres. Leading on from that, the heights are also in feet, and they can be measured from mean high water. We'll need this later in the video when we touch on vertical sextant angles. I'm not actually interested in the corrections, local restrictions, or anything else like that today, as we're just demonstrating techniques and won't actually be using the chart for navigation. So, to position fixing. All position fixing relies upon lines of position. A line of position is basically a line that you've drawn onto the chart in the knowledge that you're somewhere along that line. The more lines you draw, the more accurate your position fix will be. All of the methods that we're going to discuss are just different ways of plotting a line of position. First off, let's look at the GPS fix. All this involves is transferring your GPS position onto the chart. It's not exactly a traditional technique, but is very important nonetheless. Your GPS will give you a latitude and longitude, corresponding to the WGS84 datum, and this is why we wanted the datum of the chart. Some units may use a different datum, so do check the instructions for your own before plotting. In this example, at 12 o'clock noon, our GPS is telling us that we're at 43 degrees, 56.4 minutes north, 068 degrees, 03.5 minutes west. And we know latitude is the measure of how far north or south you are, so it corresponds to the side of the chart. So for us, we're looking for 43 degrees, 56.4, along the side axis. Now that we've got our first line, we know we're somewhere along the parallel line that passes through this latitude. For our second line, we use the longitude, 068 degrees, 03.5 minutes west. And this time we line it up along the bottom of the chart, then we draw a parallel line straight up so that it crosses our first line. The GPS fix at 12 o'clock is the point where these two lines cross. And now a question for you. How many lines of position is this? Is it two lines of position, basically the two lines that we've drawn onto the chart, or is it more than two? Vote now on the card and stay until the end of the video when I will give my answer. The next line of position that we're going to discuss is the visual bearing line. For this, you just use your boat's compass to take a bearing of an object. We're going to use the lighthouse here on Piti Manon Island in this example. You can shoot the bearing on your magnetic compass, which gives you a compass bearing, but then you need to correct it to be a true bearing before you can plot it onto the chart. Correcting a bearing just means taking variation and deviation into account. Variation is the difference between magnetic north and true north, and it's to do with the magnetic north pole wandering around a little bit. Deviation is the difference between magnetic north and what your compass says is north, and is more to do with the metals on your boat deflecting the compass a little bit. So to correct a compass bearing, you just apply the corrections in order. You take your compass bearing and add a deviation correction, which you can read from your compass card. This will give you a magnetic bearing. Then you can apply variation to that magnetic bearing, which will give you your true bearing. You can find the variation on the compass rows on the chart. So you can see here in our case, it's going to be 16 degrees, 15 minutes west, as we're still in 2018. It sounds complex, but it's not too bad. Say we get a compass bearing of 060 degrees at 1500. We can start our table adding 060 into the compass row. We then read the deviation from the deviation card, 
if we're currently heading north, our deviation is going to be 4 degrees west. This tells us that all magnetic compass bearings are 4 degrees west of being a magnetic bearing. So we need to subtract 4 degrees to turn it into that magnetic bearing. This gives us 56 degrees magnetic. In the same way, we already know the variation is 16 degrees 15 minutes west, so we just need to subtract 16.25 from 56, which gives 39.75, so we'll call that 40 degrees true, as the nearest whole degree is going to be fine for me today. Do please tell me in the comments below if you'd find further explanations of correcting compass bearings useful, and we can look at doing that in a future video. With our true bearing, we can then plot straight onto the chart. We'll just use the compass rows lined up with 040 and transfer that line to the lighthouse. Our line of position runs away from the lighthouse and tells us that we're somewhere along the line at a time of 1500. Theoretically, the line could extend any distance away from the lighthouse, so we indicate that potential continuation using a single arrow at the end. Next, let's look at our third way of finding a line of position, a range. There are a few different ways for finding ranges at sea. The easiest, of course, is to use your radar, but I know a lot of smaller boats may not have a radar, so let's use a sextant instead. No matter what method you use to get your range, plotting it onto the chart is exactly the same. We're going to use a vertical sextant angle. This is why I wanted to know how heights are measured on this particular chart. We'll use the same lighthouse as before, and we can see that it's 123 feet above mean high water. What this means is that when the tide is at mean high water height, the light at the top of the lighthouse is 123 feet above. The tide does change, so you may need to apply a correction, but we won't do that today, let's just say the tide is at mean high water level. On this diagram, we are some unknown distance away from the lighthouse. We can now make a triangle formed by the lighthouse top, the sea level below, and our own position. We want to know the distance along the bottom of the triangle. That distance is x. We already know the length of the opposite side, which was 123 feet, the height of our lighthouse, and we can measure the angle at our own position using the sextant. Let's say the sextant gives an angle of 18 minutes, or 0.3 degrees. Again, I won't cover sextant use today, but let me know in the comments if that would be another useful video in the future. From trigonometry, tan of an angle equals opposite over adjacent. The angle is 0.3 degrees, the opposite is 123 feet, and the adjacent is the unknown that we're hoping to find. We can rearrange a little bit to get x equals 123 divided by tan of 0.3 degrees, which equals 23,491 feet. I've just rounded the answer off to the nearest foot here. There are 6,076 feet in a nautical mile, so this gives us 3.9 nautical miles in total. Do bear in mind that the angle must be precise. A reasonable sextant should give an accuracy of 0.1 minutes. If this angle had have been one minute different, say 17 minutes instead of 18 minutes, the resultant distance would have been 4.1 miles instead of 3.9. Tiny change in angle gives a large change in the distance. Anyway, regardless of the method you use, you now have a range of 3.9 miles, which you need to plot onto the chart as a line of position. To measure distances and ranges on a chart, you need to use the latitude scale. The reason for this is to do with the projection method used to translate the spherical Earth's surface onto a flat chart. Just remember that you need to measure distances at the side of the chart. You set your compasses to a range of 3.9 miles, and then draw an arc centred on the lighthouse we used. This arc is your line of position. You are somewhere along this line, and actually that line could extend in either direction, so you indicate that with an arrow at each end. Again, the time is 1500, so now you have two lines of position taken at the same time. The only location that you could be where both lines are correct is the point at which they cross. This is your fix at 1500. Although the two lines technically do give a fix, you have no confirmation in case you made an error with one of your lines. You really need three or more position lines to confirm your fix. For method four, 
we're going to have a look at a running fix. We'll do our running fix from Mount Desert Rock. You notice that it's way out at sea, so there's not much else available for taking bearings. So running fix is actually probably the best method here. We're going to say we're heading due north, 000, at a speed of 10 knots. We'll need this information shortly. First off, you plot a regular single line of position. Let's say we get a bearing of 060 degrees true at 1800. Notice I've already corrected this one to be true instead of it being a compass bearing. 12 minutes later at 1812, we take a second bearing of the rock and find it's now bearing 120 degrees true. We can plot a second line of position at 1812. Now we've got two lines of position, but they're not taken at the same time. To be able to use them both, we need to adjust one of them to match the time of the other. This is where we apply our course and speed. In the time period between the two observations, 12 minutes, we have travelled 2 miles due north. If we transfer our original line of position north by 2 miles, the times will then match. We can take a point anywhere along the line to do the transfer. From any point, we just measure 2 miles north and then we transfer the original line to the new position. To show that it's a transferred line of position instead of a direct measurement, we add a second arrow to the end, making it a double arrow. The time for this transferred line of position is 1812, which matches our second observation. We now have two lines of position, both at the same time. The point at which they cross is our fix for 1812. You can see the transfer process reduces the accuracy of the fix. If your heading or speed is slightly off, it will introduce errors. This is one of the reasons for flagging it up with the double arrow. It highlights that the position is less accurate than it would have been if you'd have been using two primary position fixing lines. The final method that we will touch upon is a celestial fix. I can't cover the full celestial fixing procedure today, but we'll run over how to plot the result onto a chart. The principle of a celestial fix is that you guess your position and then you measure a selection of stars or celestial bodies to find out precisely how far your guess is away from your actual position. We can plot the estimated position onto the chart as a triangle, adding a time that it applies. So we'll call it 1900 today. You then calculate a bearing and an intercept for any number of stars. For example, you may have shot Sirius and you find it's bearing 120 degrees, and you get an intercept of one mile towards. This means that your real position is one mile closer to Sirius than your initial guess was. Measuring one mile along the bearing line towards Sirius, you can then draw a perpendicular line of position. You could be anywhere along that line, and it could actually extend in either direction. So you're gonna put an arrow at either end. Likewise, maybe you find Jupiter is bearing 180 degrees, but this time you get an intercept of two miles away. This means your real position is two miles further away from Jupiter than your initial guess was. You have to measure two miles away from the bearing, and then you draw your second line of position. Assuming you have taken the measurements at the same time, your real position is simply the point at which these lines cross. Like all other methods, two lines really isn't enough to claim an accurate fix. Often with celestial fixing, we would plan for six stars, hoping to get at least three or four accurate lines of position. And now let's return to the question I asked earlier. How many lines of position were in our GPS fix? Remember, we plotted two lines onto the chart, latitude and longitude, but there are actually many, many more hidden away inside the GPS. The GPS calculated a position from at least four satellites effectively plotting at least four lines of position mathematically. It then performed all of its calculations and gave its most likely fix as a latitude and longitude with reference to the WGS84 datum. All that we actually did was to transfer that latitude and longitude onto the chart. You'll notice that I didn't add line of position symbology to the latitude and longitude lines from a GPS fix. They're not actually lines of position. They're simply construction lines for transferring the position onto the chart. And now I've got a favour to ask. This video has been completely different to others I've done. Instead of producing a whole series of short videos, I've included a lot of information in just this one. 
What do you prefer, a series of shorter weekly videos or a single longer one? Let me know in the comments section below.